A spectator signs a card. And you, the magician, also sign a card. And yet, instantly, you are able to have access to a duplicate of their signed card. Their signature, their card, an exact copy to be used in any tricks you want. The possibilities are endless. This is how to duplicate a spectator's signature. Two years ago, I invented a way of duplicating a spectator's signature from a playing card in real time, instantly, in performance. And I thought that would be a secret that I would keep to myself, that I would never share with anyone, not on YouTube, not in book form, or as a magic product or anything. So much so that I didn't actually put it in my most recent magic book. Plethora. Today, that changes because I am going to be sharing with you the secret to this real-time signature duplication. It can be done with playing cards, with any sort of playing cards, with any colour of Sharpie, and it's not even really limited to playing cards. In fact, you can do this with banknotes, you can do it with post-it notes, blank business cards, whatever you want. It is a versatile and workable signature duplication that hopefully, by the end of this video, you will be able to perform. Now, it's not easy and you will need to know how to do a card force, but if you're happy with doing a card force, then welcome to this signature duplication. It doesn't have a name yet, unfortunately. I need to come up with a name for this. It's gotta have a name, surely. This trick has got to have a name. Let's come up with a name for this trick right now. Whatever tube station I point to will be the name of this trick. Okay, I'll just do this at random, okay? That one. St. John's Wood. St. John's Wood. The St. John's Wood Signature Duplication. Funny story about St. John's Wood. It is the only tube station that doesn't have any letters of the word mackerel in it. I, I honestly don't know why I know that. Let's just get into the tutorial. trick, the only things you really need are a couple of sharpies and a couple of decks of cards. You're only going to use one deck of cards in performance though, you're going to want to take one card from the other deck so that you have a duplicate. So choose a card that is a nice card to have signed, for instance the two of hearts is a nice one because it's got lots of white space. So choose that and then take the other from the other deck and you will have two of the same card. And you're also going to want to do a little bit of preset, and this preset can be done in five seconds, probably less than that, because you're going to want to take another card, let's say the three of spades in this case, and you're going to want to sign it yourself. You're going to want to put your signature on the card. This will all make sense in a moment. So for me, the preset looks like this. I'm just going to put cavern on a card like that. That is all I need to do before the performance. So this can be done you know, once and this card will last forever. You're not going to get rid of this card or give it away or anything like that. Once you've got this card, you are set. You can use this multiple times in multiple performances as long as a card lasts, which is a very long time. So now you're going to take your two of hearts, find your duplicate two of hearts from this deck of cards, which I just opened which is here, here we go, the two of hearts. So now I've got two of the same card. Here we go, I've got the two duplicates and my signed, my pre-signed card. We'll call this the pre-signed card. And now this is essentially how the trick is going to be set up. So I'm going to put the cards as they will be set up on top of the deck. Very simply, the two duplicates go either side of the pre-signed card and all of that goes on top of the deck. 
So from the top we have the two, below that the signed card, below that the other two. And this now is the full setup. That is everything. It's a very simple setup. And if you're worried about having cards on top of the deck that need to be on top of the deck before the trick, what you can do, what I often do, is have a card box and I put the cards that need to be on top of the deck at the start of the trick inside the box. So I'll do it now. I take the top three cards, I place them into the box like so, and now essentially what I have is a way of setting those cards on top of the deck without having to take them out of my pocket, deal them on top to set the trick up. All I need to do to set the trick up is take these cards, put them in the box at the end of whatever trick I was doing beforehand, and then if they want to see another trick, all I now need to do is take all the cards out and I am set for the trick. It's a very, very simple thing. Just using a card box, you are able to set tricks up in a super easy way. So beforehand, when these cards weren't on top of the deck, I can now shuffle, I can do whatever I want with these cards and it will not affect the trick I want to do that involves the three preset cards on top. So you've got your pre-signed in the middle of the two duplicates, that goes on top and you're ready to perform. The first thing you need to know how to do is a force. I mentioned this at the start, you're going to want to force the top card, the first duplicate, and this is the card they are going to initially sign. I'm not actually going to teach a force in this video. I did think about teaching a very, very simple force in this video, but if you don't know a card force, then you shouldn't be doing this trick because this is an advanced trick. So if you don't know a card force, then stop watching this video, go and learn one because they are a superpower when it comes to magic. Being able to force someone to pick a card you want and have it feel like a free choice is a superpower, don't underestimate it. So go and learn a card force if you haven't already. And if you already know one, then great. You need to know how to force the top card without affecting the rest of the deck in a way. Uh, so once that's been done, once this card is forced and ready, now they are going to sign it using one of your Sharpies. Some of you at this point might be trying to work one step ahead, so I will speed up the explanation and show you what this trick will really look like. So, imagine here that we have the two of hearts, and this card is being signed at this point, so I'm not going to do it. I'll recap the Sharpie so it doesn't dry up. But imagining that they are signing this card, you are now going to explain that you are also going to sign a card. And this will make sense for the trick, and obviously lots of tricks use a signed card by a spectator and one by you. Normally, I don't like signing a card myself because it doesn't feel like that's necessary. In this trick though, it is necessary because the secret to this whole thing is in the cover of you signing a card, you are going to be duplicating the signature that they make on this card. That is the secret. So you are essentially duplicating the signature in plain sight. You get a double under the top two cards, which will now obviously, when you turn it over as one, show the two of hearts. You don't want to show this to the audience because obviously if you show that, they are going to see it's the same card and they'll know what you're about to do. So you turn this to yourself. As they're signing this, you take your Sharpie and I just stand up so I'm doing this properly. So they're signing that. You turn this over and you explain that you are also going to sign a card. And you notice how I turned it over to myself and now I'm ready. And as they're doing that, I'm going to be copying what they're doing. Few little subtleties before we get on to actually how to copy the signature. The way I turned this card over is very, very important. So if I move this all out of the way, I'll show you how I did that. Obviously I have my double here with the pinky just resting in there, keeping a break uh, so that the two cards above it are separated from the rest of the deck. This gives me ample room to come across with my fingers and I'm going to rotate this way so that I turn the card over and to myself like this. And at this point I'm now keeping the break over here as I duplicate the signature. is sort of like you're sweeping it over this way and your hand is going to go from this position up to this position as if you are ready to sign your card. And as you do that, obviously, you are wanting to be looking at the signature they make. So a subtlety that I use quite a lot is I place their card down for them and I say sign this so that everyone can see. And that wording is important because if they sign it just normally, how they would normally sign it, what they might do is sign it to themselves like this. You don't want that because you want to know what the signature looks like. So by placing it down and saying, sign it so everyone knows what this card looks like, 
you are essentially saying, put it there and keep it there. What I'm not saying though is, sign it here on the table so that I can see. You want to take the heat off you at this moment, you want to put it on the audience. So obviously you're going to need more than one spectator. You also want to make sure the audience are aware that you're signing a card. And I think that will be pretty obvious because you're going to have the pen and doing that. And in a moment you are going to show a card with your signature on, which is obviously the pre-signed one. So the reason we pre-signed it is so we don't have to sign two cards. We are never going to be signing our own card. We're simply going to be duplicating this. So you put this on the table, sign it so everyone can see. You also say, I'm going to sign a card, and you turn this over to yourself. You take your Sharpie, which will probably be in your pocket, and you begin to duplicate the signature they make. So in order to demonstrate that it is possible, I am going to here duplicate a signature, and we will put spectator. Let's imagine SP is for spectator. That is the signature that they have made with this pen. And what you want now is to replicate this as closely as possible. Now there are a few things that are really, really important. Firstly, choice of duplicate card. This is something that maybe some of you are starting to think of. You can't use asymmetrical cards. You can't use a card like the Ace of Clubs, the Ace of uh, Hearts. You can't use any Sevens or any Nines because those are all asymmetrical. So choose your cards wisely. Twos are symmetrical. Uh, some of the aces are. The ace of diamonds is the only one that's symmetrical because the diamond is the only one that is symmetrical anyway. So choose your duplicate wisely. If you want to go for the two of hearts because that's a safe bet, then go for it. And also the way they do it. So there are different sort of angles you need to be thinking about. Um, so if we divide this card up into imagining the y-axis down the top and the x-axis across here. It's all getting very mathematical, but this is how I like to think of it. I'm not a very mathsy person, by the way, I don't really like maths, but if I think of it like the sort of positioning, almost like coordinates, if you think of it like that, it'll become a lot easier. So with this, if I see this on the table, it's obviously going to be facing them. So if I'm performing here, obviously I wouldn't normally be kneeling down, but if I'm performing here, Obviously this is upside down for me, so I'm going to want to take this and take the card to myself. Now, here's the thing, it probably won't be perfect, in fact it definitely won't be perfect, but I am going to give it a shot right now, and obviously I did this so it might be a little bit easier because I'm the spectator as well in this situation, but I am going to try and replicate this from my angle. Okay, let's do a comparison. It's actually not that bad. It is not that bad at all. I will show you my, <laughs> my work of art, and I will let you be the judge. It's not bad, is it? I think I've got this one the wrong way around, yeah. It's not all that bad. Now, obviously, there are differences, and the longer you look at this, there will be differences, especially with the P and the angle that I've done it at is a little bit different, but I've got the dot down. The S is pretty good, I think. Yeah, it's pretty good. Also, you will note that I need to choose two Sharpies with very similar sharpness uh, because if one's really blunt and bold and writes really thick and the other's very, very fine, they will come out looking differently. Obviously, pressure is not something that is very easy to judge, the pressure of how someone writes, uh, but if you're able to replicate the thinness or thickness, rather, of uh, how they've done the signature, then you will come up with something like this. That is an attempt. Now, also, there is a little bit of wording that will help make this easier, and I said throughout the trick signature, I've been saying signature, but actually, what I would recommend for beginners of this trick, which is most of you watching, um, don't say signature, say initials. I want you to put your initials on this card, and that is just a little thing. They will put their initials, but it will mean that it's a lot easier for you. And once they've written it, you can then begin saying signature, because signature and initials you know, they are pretty much the same thing, except when it comes to instructions. If you say someone, put your signature on this, they'll put their signature. If you say put their initials, they will put their initials. But once they've done it, then you can refer to signature, and I think it makes it a lot more impressive if you say, you put your signature on this, and they will feel like they really did have the choice of putting anything. The trick isn't over at this point. You have done the duplication, and I will come to, later on in the video, I will come to what to do if you have done a bad duplication, because it happens to the, the best of us. Uh, if, in the middle of a trick, you have done a 
duplication that you are suddenly not happy with, there is a get out, there is an instant get out with this trick. The whole reason for the pre-signed card that we made at the start is because that is the justification for what you're doing up here. So, as soon as I've done the duplication, I'm immediately going to hide it, and what I'm going to do is simply pull out the card behind the double and place that onto the table. And that is supposedly what I have been signing when I've been signing my card. So, at this point you have this, and if you are not happy with leaving that face up, there is a trick I do that uses it uh, face up. What you can do is with the double, you can simply turn it over, obviously keeping it away from the audience, and then put that on the table. And what you have now is a duplication of their signature on top of the deck, and now two cards in play that you can do whatever you want with. And this is a really powerful position to be in. This is like being in the best position in chess. You are so many moves ahead of them right now, they're never ever going to suspect that on top of the deck, they, <laughs> their signature is duplicated on a card. They're not going to think that. I almost don't want to go through uses for duplicating a signature because there are so many uses, it feels futile even giving you a trick to do at this point because there are so many that you can do. You've duplicated someone's signature for God's sake. There are so many possibilities at this point. But I am going to give you a trick because you need to know what to do with the trick uh, when you have your signed card. So there is obviously, um, it's called the kiss trick, you can do that if you want to. A trick that is quite fun to do is um, this, so you can take your signed card, which in this case for me is the three of spades, uh, you can turn that over, place this here, and then instantly their signed card is suddenly over here, and you have this incredible moment where they are just like, what? And they're doing this double take. And then you can say, wait, turn over, turn over your card, because you'll see that actually it has changed. And as they're doing that, it's perfect misdirection to change this card back. And it's this just weird double take where they've seen their card on the table, suddenly it's on the deck, and they're like, whoa, what's this card? And as they're turning it over, obviously they're taking their eyes off the deck at this point because they're turning this card over and as they're doing that it gives you perfect misdirection. All I did, what I did there was I simply took their signed card, their original signed card, place it face down on the table and I say watch this card and I've got a double here so this is two cards and I've got a break here with my pinky finger once again. I come over and I think it's called a double turnover move um, but essentially I do that. So instead of turning the card over, in a way I'm turning the deck on top of the card and holding it still in mechanics grip. And then I can do my magical gesture, whatever you want to do. As I turn the deck over, this is only being flashed then for a second, remember? So they, they've not got too much time to realise that this isn't their signature. But as I've done that, they then go to turn this card over and that gives me perfect, you know, perfect misdirection as they're turning this over to simply get my double again, turn this over. They're expecting this to be the three of spades. And as they see it's the two of hearts, they will look back here and this card has changed again. It's a great little double take moment. But obviously from this, there are so many things you can do. You've obviously got this signature as well, so if you want to do switches and changes and whatever you want between these two cards, teleportations, you can even do a restoration. You can tear this card up and have it restored into this one. What I would say though, is don't overdo it because <laughs> the temptation is to overdo this. Because you've got this duplicated card, you want to take this as far as possible and do the most crazy things. Um, but don't. Really, really don't. Never at any point show both cards. This shouldn't be a trick in which you say, ah, oh, look, I can actually take your card and make two of them. You know, spectators aren't silly. They will know when a signature has been duplicated and when it hasn't. And I think the less you use it, the more powerful it is. So that's my advice, uh, just to not push this too far because you want this to be impossible but not so ridiculously impossible that the only explanation is what's actually happened. Okay, one final pointer uh, to what to do when you have duplicated a signature and it has not gone to plan. So they have signed this card, that is the one that's being signed, and you 
as the magician are over here and you are attempting to duplicate their signature. But let's say I well and truly mess it up. <laughs> Obviously it wouldn't be messed up that much. But let's say I have royally messed up over here and I look at that card and I look at this one and I go, oh dear, I have, uh, I have not done this very well. The great thing about this trick is, no matter what situation you are in, you have got perfect justification because you have always got this card and this is technically what you were signing all along. So there is no need to panic and think that you have destroyed your own trick and what are you gonna do? Because you can simply not use this card. There is isn't, there isn't no reason that you have to use this card. And the way I would recommend practicing this trick is by not using this card. You are not gonna be the most perfect, you know, forger, the most perfect duplicator of signatures straight away. The way I practice this trick is obviously in performance because you're gonna need to, you know, get used to what spectators will throw at you. Um, this is an improvisation trick. You're not gonna be able to do it straight away. So the way I would recommend practicing is by simply not using this card. You turn it over, you introduce this into play and you forget this ever happened because you've messed it up. And as you practice, as you get better, and as eventually, hopefully, you do a perfect duplication, you can now introduce this card. But don't do it straight away because you're not going to be perfect at this. It will take... <laughs> I missed the table. It will take a lot of attempts at forging different signatures in different situations until you're happy to introduce that card. So as you're doing it, just ignore it. Carry on with the pre-signed card as if the trick never happened. And that will also build your confidence up to show that you can do this in public, you can do this in front of people, because they're not going to know what you're doing when you're supposedly signing your card. They will just think you're signing your card, because that is, you know, for all intents and purposes, what you are doing. So there we have it, that is how to duplicate a signature of a spectator from their playing card in real time, in performance, and completely get away with it. The ideas that I went through two years ago when I was creating this trick were totally ridiculous. And in the end, I landed on this method, which is so bold and so out there in the open in front of people. Uh, it was crazy. And when I performed this for the first time, I was just thinking, I am not going to get away with this. <laughs> but I did, and I had a blast teaching this for you. Um, so yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this. I certainly did. Thanks for watching. And also, just one last note, if you do enjoy these tutorials, I have a magic club over on Patreon. For $5 a month, you can learn a ton of really powerful magic. Magic that is so powerful, I just can't teach it on YouTube. These secrets need to stay secret with the people that want to go to the extra effort to learn this magic. And so if you are one of those people, $5 a month, you can join the Magic Club and learn some powerful magic, mentalism, sleight of hand, misdirection, psychology. All of my magic books are also on Patreon for the MVP tier. There's a ton of stuff and you can enjoy that as much as you want. Thank you very much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to click the thumbs up button down below if you did. And if you are new, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Blackpool 2020 is also on the way. Let me know in the comments if you are going to Blackpool. I can't wait to see you there. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. I think you're gonna have to be We're gonna have to go there.